Hi! This is not quite my April book haul. As you might have seen on Twitter and Instagram stories, I went on a London bookshop crawl recently with some booktubers and book bloggers and in the beginning I was quite good, I didn't buy that many books, but by the time we hit the second half of the bookshop crawl we had been chatting about so many different books and what always happens is that we'll just recommend each other a ton of books, which is bad for your wallet but good for your book collection. I asked you on Twitter if you wanted to see a little separate book haul of the books I bought specifically on that day, so here we are. And of course for all of these I will also mention the specific bookshops that I bought them at. I'm gonna do it in the order that I bought them. So the first one I bought at the London Review Bookshop, which is this lovely bookshop sort of between Holborn and Tottenham Court Road near the British Museum. They have really really lovely displays. I think it's a really easy shop for browsing, especially for the fiction section which is upstairs. It is probably one of my favorite bookshops in London and I feel like whenever there's any kind of book related meetup that is a bookshop that we always hit. So the book I bought there is The Sellout by Paul Beatty. This was the winner of the Man Booker Prize of 2016. I've been meaning to buy it for quite a long time and it was one of the first things that I noticed on one of the tables so it's the one I decided to pick up there. The description of this sounds really interesting. Basically says that the narrator of The Sellout spent his childhood as the subject of his father's racially charged psychological studies. He is told that his father's work will lead to a memoir that will solve their financial woes but when his father is killed in a drive-by shooting, he discovers there never was a memoir. All that's left is a bill for a drive through funeral. So that's book number one. Next up was Persephone. This is a gorgeous bookshop where basically almost all of the books inside are grey and they have this beautiful sort of wallpaper pattern on the inside. They each come with individual bookmarks. They reprint forgotten 20th century novels, short stories, cookery books and memoirs by mostly female writers. This is a bookshop that is an absolute joy to be in. The people that work there are always lovely. It looks gorgeous on the outside as well. Personally, like, a lot of the books in there might not fit entirely with my taste, but I picked up one that really caught my interest, and it is Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. Now, this cover does not look like their sort of usual covers, so this is one of the different ones. And they also, I'm pretty sure, have a poster of this image in the shop. Now, when I posted about this on Twitter, loads and loads of people said that they absolutely adore this book. I had absolutely never heard of it before. It says Miss Pettigrew is a down-on-her-luck middle-aged governess sent by her employment agency to work for a nightclub singer rather than a household of unruly children. Over a period of 24 hours, her life has changed forever. This book also has some really hilarious illustrations in it. After that we went to Forbidden Planet where I browsed lots and lots of graphic novels. Lauren, whose channel I'll link below, bought the Encyclopedia of Early Earth. She's already planning on buying it anyway but whenever I go to a bookshop I like try and get people to buy the Encyclopedia of Early Earth because it is so good. And in return there was a book that she sort of convinced me to buy and that was in Foils which is one of our last stops of the day. If you've ever been to the Foils at Tottenham Court Road you know it is just heaven for book lovers. There are so many different floors. It is bright, it is beautiful, they have an amazing YA section, they have a really good graphic novel section. It is just, it's fantastic. First of all, the book that Lauren pointed out to me, I sort of had to think about it while I was shopping and then when I came back they had already moved it to a different section but I managed to track it down. And it is The Accusation, Forbidden Stories from Inside North Korea. What she told me about this book is that all these stories have been smuggled out of North Korea by an anonymous person who still lives there and I've watched so many documentaries about North Korea but I've never really read any books about it so I figured this was my chance. I also really love this cover and it's like a really nice finish as well. It's also won an English Pen Award which is really cool. English Pen exists to promote literature and our understanding of it, to uphold writers' freedoms around the world, to campaign against persecution and imprisonment of writers for stating their views and to promote the friendly cooperation of writers and the free exchange of ideas. Ideas. I have Octavia E. Butler's Kindred. This is something I've heard so many people talk about and I've looked at this book before and I could only find the most hideous covers online. But when I tried out foils they of course did not let me down and had this gorgeous edition. I'm not sure in which way this book falls into science fiction. I think it does. I'm gonna leave a link below if you want to read a little bit more about it and I will discover more about this as I read it. And then I have Binti by Nnedi Okorafor. She left her home for the stars but found more adventure than she bargained for. A tense and intimate coming-of-age story in space 
which is something I'm always up for. I can't remember who specifically recommended this to me, but it was while we were chatting about like BAME authors writing sci-fi. And this is one that was recommended to me while I was in the sci-fi section. Finally, this was a book that was promoted on the shelves when you sort of walk into the shop. And it is The Things I Would Tell You British Muslim Women Write, edited by Sabrina Mahfouz. From established literary heavyweights to emerging spoken word artists, the writers in this groundbreaking collection blow away the narrow image of the Muslim woman. Now I think this would be a very good sort of accompanying read to The Good Immigrant. I feel like it probably has a pretty similar setup. The cover of this is absolutely gorgeous. I don't know if you can see it. There's like all these beautiful um, like pens in there. It seems like it's got quite a bit of poetry in there as well, which is great. So yeah, that was it. I don't know if by this time my East London bookshop tour video is up yet. If it's not up yet, that's something you can look forward to. But if you'd like me to also do a bookshop tour of some other parts of London, let me know and I will start working on that. I hope you enjoyed this little bonus haul. Links, as always, will be in the description and I'll talk to you guys later. Doei!